Today, I'll show you how to make the most delicious honey yeast rolls you've ever put in your mouth. These golden brown pieces of heaven go great with any meal. I'll show you how fast and easy they are to whip up next. Alright guys, so the things that you're going to need to make these delicious honey yeast rolls are six and a half cups of flour, and I'll go ahead and put the recipe down below. You're also going to need one and three quarters cup of milk, three teaspoons of salt, a third of a cup plus one teaspoon of honey, a half a cup or one stick of butter melted and cooled, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, or just one of those one and a quarter ounce packages, two large eggs at room temperature, and also a quarter cup of warm water between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And to make your life a lot easier, you're also going to need a stand mixer with a dough hook. Now, I just recently found this beauty at the Goodwill. It was a little pricey for a Goodwill trip at about $99, but I just couldn't leave him there. The only thing that was wrong with him is the grease had separated on the inside here, and that was an easy fix. All I had to do was take apart the top here, take out all the grease, and replace it. This also came with the balloon whisk and the paddle attachment, and if you ever went shopping for one of these nowadays, this and the dough hook are plastic. Who wants that? Now purple wouldn't have been my first pick in color. However, to manly him up a bit, I decided to name him Gilbert Grape. And I also made this camo cover for him just to butch it up a bit. Now this little baby has turned my dough game from okay to awesome. If you don't have one of these, of course you can just knead it by hand. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast into Gilbert here. And like I said, if you're not using bulk yeast like this, you just want to use one of the quarter ounce packets. And just a side note, I like to keep my yeast in the freezer. It does take me quite a while to get through this whole jar, but if you keep it in the freezer, It'll keep it nice and fresh for a very long time. Next, I'm going to add a quarter cup of warm water. And one teaspoon of honey. And now I'm just going to give this a little mix and let it sit for five minutes. It should get nice and foamy and bubbly. That way you know your yeast is alive. Alright guys, as you can see here, my yeast is nice and foamy and bubbly, so it's alive. So the next thing that I did was go ahead and measure out my one and three quarters cup of milk. I cut up my one stick. That's a half a cup of butter in my milk. And I'm going to go ahead and microwave this until the milk is warm and my butter is melted. You do not want this boiling or way too hot. So I'm just going to do it until, like I said, the butter is just melted. In the meantime, I went ahead and measured out six and a half cups of flour and stuck it in this bowl here. And to that, I'm going to add three teaspoons of salt. So with this whisk here, I'm going to whisk this all up, and it's also going to break up any clumps in the flour. Alright guys, I have my warm milk here with my butter, and it took about three minutes. I put it in there for a minute and a half, stirred it, a minute and a half, stirred it, and I got this. So to my milk mixture, I'm going to go ahead and add a third cup of more honey.
And I'm also going to add my two eggs. But before I stick them in my milk, I'm just going to put them in here where I had the honey and beat them up a little bit. If you microwave your milk a little too hot, adding the eggs and the honey will help cool it down. Like I said, you don't want it extremely hot or you'll kill your yeast. So now I'm just going to take my bowl of flour here and add about half of it. Try not to make a mess. I'm going to lower and lock Gilbert, turn him on low about half the milk. Now I'm just going to alternate milk, flour, milk, flour, so it's all incorporated. Alright guys, now you can see that this made it quite a sticky dough here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this knead here for 8 minutes. Alright guys, so I've had this kneading for about 8 minutes now. And you can see it's still a nice sticky dough. That's exactly what you want. So now I'm just going to clean this off the dough hook. I'm going to remove my bowl from Gilbert here. And now we just want to let this rise for about an hour. So what I'm going to do is just cover it with some plastic wrap here. And also a kitchen towel. And I'm going to stick this in my oven with just the light on for about one hour. Alright guys, so my dough has been proving for about an hour, so let's take a look. Oh yeah. It's just perfect. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer it from this bowl into this bowl. But before I do that, I'm going to give this bowl a good spray with some Pam. I'm going to punch down this. This dough looks just beautiful. I'm going to transfer it over to this bowl. And now we're just going to cover this again and let it rise for one more hour. Altogether, we're going to let this dough rise three times. Now, it might seem like a lot, but I promise you, it's worth it. So, I'm just going to use my same plastic wrap here. I may have to get another piece also. And I want to spray this with some Pam, too. And just like I thought, I'll need another piece of plastic wrap. Now I'm just going to cover it with this towel, throw it back in my oven for another hour. Alright guys, it's been another hour here. And before I get my dough out, you want to grab two 9 by 13 pans and lightly grease them. Now just set these off to the side for a minute and go get your dough. Now doesn't that just look gorgeous? The next thing you want to do is punch this down and divide your dough in half. Now I'm going to put this half back in the bowl for later. 
Now with this half, you want to cut it into 12 pieces. Now you just want to take one of your dough balls and I just like to fold in on itself until it's a nice, smooth, round ball. Just like that. And throw it into one of your grease pans. If you get a piece that's a little smaller, try to find a big piece and just rip a chunk off of it. You want these to be as uniform as possible. Alright guys, so I have my first batch here all shaped up. And this recipe is going to make 24 rolls. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my reserved plastic wrap here. I'm going to cover the pan up. I'm going to cover it with a towel. And this time I'm just going to set it right on top of my oven. Now I'm just going to take my other half of dough and do the exact same thing. Alright guys, I have my second batch done here. I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. Just loosely. Grab another kitchen towel and place it over this pan. Like I said, I'm just going to leave these on top of my stove, this time to proof. And you want these to proof for 30 to 60 minutes or until double in size. So while these are proofing for the third time, I'm going to be preheating my oven to 400 degrees. Alright guys, so my rolls have risen here and they're about double in size. It was about 30 to 45 minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bake these at a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Alright guys, my rolls are done and don't they look beautiful. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do while they're still warm is brush them with butter. I'm going to gild the lily here a little bit, and I'm going to brush them with some honey butter. Now this is just some honey butter that I have left over in my fridge. And to make this, you want to mix a quarter cup of honey with a half a cup, which is one stick, of softened butter. Now I'm just going to get a glob on here and brush my rolls with it. Now since it's just me and mother here, I'm going to go ahead and freeze one of these pans. To do that, you just want to let them cool down completely. I like to wrap them in foil, put them in a Ziploc bag, and throw them in the freezer. They'll stay good for a couple months. And to serve them, all you need to do is thaw it out. You can eat them just like that when they're thawed, or I like to just warm them right back up in the oven. I guarantee you these will be the best honey rolls you've ever put in your mouth. Now I'm going to be serving these with ham. I'm also going to be making homemade mac and cheese and some cream spinach. Sounds delicious, don't it? I hope you give this recipe a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a comment about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this across your social media, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.